This is Heart Rhythm TV and I'm Julie Shea here with Dr. Charles Love to talk about the new International Board of Heart Rhythm Examiner recertification process. So thank you Dr. Love for joining me today. So historically uh, for the IBRI exam, um, either for a device related or electrophysiologic related um, testing, once you took the test, you would recertify by taking that test again 10 years later. But recently, the recredentialing has changed, and I would love it if you'd tell our audience a little bit more about the new credentialing process. Sure, we call this new process C3, or IBHRE C3, Continuous Credentialing Certification. So instead of sitting for this gut-wrenching, expensive examination once every 10 years that nobody wants to do, right. uh, and also recognizing the fact that our science moves at a very rapid pace, in order to keep current and to avoid having to do this big examination, yep. we have, have now developed this new certification, continuing certification process, which involves once every two, well, during a two-year period of time, you will receive information of papers, guidelines, in different areas of our content outline. And you will need to answer in an open book fashion online questions regarding the information okay. that you've read. And once you answer a certain number of questions correctly during that two year period of time, you now retain your certification until the next two year cycle begins. Okay. And so it's a rolling two year cycle and you never have to sit for that big examination again. Great, great. Is there a cost involved? Of course, yeah. yeah. It costs us money to deliver that sure. product and, and of course we pass that on. Uh, we are looking at right now probably about $149 okay. every two years. Yeah. But this is instead of paying close to $1,000 right. every 10 years for that exam, which will probably be higher 10 years from now as right. well. Yeah. It certainly makes sense, as you said, with the you know, quickly changing technology and trying to you know, cram 10 years into one exam is it's a daunting you know, thought to have to of do Of course, that. and if you sat for an exam, say, eight years ago, we weren't really doing his bundle pacing, left bundle pacing, right. leadless pacemakers. Right. You know, it's just in the device area. Of course, things in the EP world have changed a lot too. So in order to keep people current, encourage them to keep current, and to maintain this as a really more valuable credential and to also reduce that stress level of sitting for this yeah. exam in this, in this uh, having center. Done, having done it, I can say it's there probably the hardest uh, exam I've ever sat for. Oh. So just the time-wise, just sitting and taking an exam for that many hours. Right, is, you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, and I think great. The, I we've had universally had great feedback about transitioning yeah. to this new yeah, cred great. credentialing platform. And when is this uh, scheduled to start? Like when can people... So the rollout begins in this coming year, in 2022. Okay. So people who have a credential already yep. will have the option of enrolling in C3 and not having to sit for that 10-year exam yep. now, or they can put off and in when their credential expires. Yep. So let's say they took it two years ago. Yep. They have a 10-year certification. We promised them that. That's what they have. So they'll have to sit for a big exam again in 10 years from the time they took the exam or they can choose to enroll in C3 mm -hmm. and not have to sit for that exam Great. again. However, people who take the exam starting in 2022 yeah. will, uh, will have to do the C3 pathway. There will be no option not to do C3 at gotcha. that point. Okay, and so I just have a question. So mine expires this year. <laughs> will I be able to just start up with doing the recredentialing next year? Yes, if you're expiring this year, you yeah. can now choose to enroll in C3 okay. starting in 2022 okay. and you will not have to sit for the exam Great. again. Great. And so I've also heard that there's another new um, exam for remote monitoring. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Remote monitoring is kind of the wild west right now. If you yeah. think about it, there's people out there reviewing tracings, reviewing interrogations, and, and we don't know who these people are. We don't know what kind of credentialing they have, yeah. if any. So, of course, the, the uh, CCDS credential, the right. Certified Cardiac Device Specialist, is a very high credential. But that includes lots of things about what goes on in the operating room, what goes on in terms of programming. And of course, if you have that credential, you are certainly capable of doing remote monitoring. Right. But what this credential is aimed at is somebody who is not doing those things, but is just doing remote monitoring, taking information off of these different websites, mm -hmm. interpreting it as to normal, abnormal, needs to be triaged at a higher level, or things are okay. And so this is going to be something that we are introducing this year as the CDRMS credential. 
Uh, if you already have the CCDS credential, please don't enroll yeah. to take the C <laughs> CDRMS. The right, CCDS is a higher credential, so to speak, or a different credential. Yeah. They overlap, but the CCDS has everything in it that the CDRMS is going to have. CDRMS, however, will not include uh, testing on programming issues and right. OR issues, things of that nature. So if you have a CDRMS, I wouldn't expect that person to be really qualified to run a pacemaker clinic or be doing programming in a pacemaker okay. clinic. Great. And one last question. Can you describe to our audience, what's the benefit of being certified? Wow. <laughs> it's a big question I, I think to it's finish a, up well, with. Well, I, <laughs> I think it's a great question. When I see somebody who comes up to me or I, I go to a lab and they have that credential, somebody coming in running a mapping system, for example, or a rep coming in to help out doing a case or helping in the clinic, and they have a CCDS or a CEPS credential, yeah. I know that person has at least that minimal level of knowledge, knows what they're talking about, understands the devices, understands arrhythmias, understands electrophysiology. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't know really what kind of training, what kind of information they can bring to bear. Seeing that credential means a lot. And in some institutions, if you get that credential as an allied professional, you can get a higher level of uh, job description and perhaps a raise. And if yep. you don't, you should. That's right. Because many of the high-performing institutions offer that to their employees, their allied professionals, and they should. Great. Well, Dr. Love, thank you so much for providing this great overview on the certifications exam for both the device, EP, and remote monitoring. Thank this you. is Heart Rhythm TV, Julie Shea, thank you.